this year's gala when I was discussing the color scheme of the red, black, and silver. Um, I remember talking to Susan and she's the one who gave me the idea of a Mardi Gras theme. Rather than all of our guests wearing masks, we thought that the type one kids and adults that wanted to participate in our video could actually be wearing a mask. Um, because I've always told my daughter, Emily, that type one diabetes doesn't have her. It's not who she is. It's just a part of her because she's actually so much more. And as for her, she's a, she's a softball player. She likes to sing, she's in drama. Um, it's not who she is that defines her. She's so many other things. So I think the mask is just her unmasking that, hey, I bet you didn't know, but I'm more than just the type one diabetic. I had to describe myself in one word. It would be silly, funny, unique, and independent. Responsible and respectful. Stubborn. And it's probably my best and my worst trait, and I give a large part of that to the diabetes. I don't give up, um, which helps me keep fighting every day. Creative and outgoing. I would say compassionate, um, supportive. Stubborn would be another one. Um, loving, caring, and I like to think insightful, but I think that just depends on the day. Pink fluffy unicorn. <laughs> if I could describe Calvin in one word, it would be fireball. <laughs> he is a ball of energy and uh, always keeping us on us, our toes. Um, the, the hilarious things that he says and his um, funny, funny, funny perspective on the world keeps everything really lighthearted in our house. <laughs> so the most challenging part a lot of challenging parts of T1D. Um, it's it's constant. It's never ending. School for us was when Lily was diagnosed uh, almost three years ago. She was uh, healthy and active, and all of a sudden she was very very lethargic and tired. We took her uh, to our pediatrician, found out that she was. At that point, she was diagnosed with type 1. We spent the weekend up in Albany, met Dr. Brodsky, who we love. And um, dealing with the diagnosis, as well as teaching our family and our friends how to help her and learn the number aspect of it and um, coping mechanisms for both herself, myself, our family, and getting through it. And now we feel like it's all we know and I, I, I would love for there to be a cure for it, but if there's not in her lifetime, then we will just move forward and continue to keep her healthy as best we can. When, uh, when I was a child, was really weren't that many type ones. Um, for instance, in my school, I was the only type one um, in my school. So to relate to other kids who had type one was hard to do. Um, I really was the odd one out the constant like every day like dealing with making my own food counting my carbs uh, you know putting in insulin whenever I eat because um, you know especially at college having such a tight schedule with like going to class studying doing homework all that um, you kind of find it hard to like balance that like making sure you're having time to eat your food and you know, making sure you have time to make sure you're testing your blood sugars and you're doing all the right stuff. And sometimes it's hard to balance that. The you know, overnights are probably the hardest in general. and we, we get up a lot during the night. And it's rare that we have a night that my wife or myself, uh, more my wife, she's more the, the pancreas in the family, as we call it. Uh, we get up at two or three in the morning. Um, now there's technology, there's uh, closed loop systems and bionic pancreases that I think that wouldn't be around if it wasn't for the uh, spearheading of that, which I think was maybe 10, 12 years ago that they really pushed for that. And I, I don't, we're, we're very lucky to be here now and, and it stinks that we're a part of this group, but 
we were part of it in a time when there's some amazing things happening where she doesn't have to take finger sticks anymore for her CGM at Dexcom. And, uh, and through different ways, there's ways that they're, we have it that they're not communicating. And I don't know if that would have been possible without the JDRF. So JDRF has been amazing. We got involved with them immediately. So he was diagnosed about five and a half years ago. And literally I was on the phone with somebody two days later, I would say. Um, and they hooked us up with the support group. And I was able to talk to some other moms and just getting information from them and knowing that I could really call them whenever, whenever I needed to. And it wasn't just something that they were saying to me, like I really believed that I could just reach out to them whenever. One of the, the things the ERF does that you, not everyone else can do, is it can't always be, uh, there's gotta be ideas that are kind of out there. And uh, like insulin responsive testing that they funded back in 2003. That most organizations were like, well, it's not a cure, and people will get upset because it's not a cure. Well, it's now, it's not there yet, but it's so close that it could be something that's a better life for people. So stuff like that, I don't know any other research organization in our communities that are really funding those. Type 1 diabetes isn't who I am. I'm an Arlington student athlete. Type 1 diabetes isn't who I am. I'm a cheerleader. D1D is not who I am. I am a football player and I play center for the Patriots. T1D is not who I am. I'm a mom. I'm a softball player. I'm an artist. T1D isn't who I am. I am a certified diabetes educator. T1D is not who I am. I'm a soccer player. I'm a JDRF rider. T1D is not who Calvin is. I'm a silly goose. I see goose. Won't you help us unmask a cure? 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 Help us, please. Help us unmask a cure. That is good. Ha, 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 ha